This conference will... Praise God. Hallelujah. God is good. He's always good. Even when we're bad, God is still good. Nothing changes him, but we need to change for him. In Jesus' name, amen. This is Reverend Essie uh, and friends with Micromana on Thursday, the 17th of Turkey Month, 2011. I hope everybody's going to have a beautiful Thanksgiving. May relatives and loved ones sit around, eat good food, pray, and talk about good things this Thanksgiving. Make sure you pray for the nation and make sure you pray for the church. Hallelujah. Amen. We're here to talk uh, today about um, uh, spiritual help, asking and praying for holy boldness and just for spiritual help. Uh, The times we need it and we ask God for it, he said, ask and you shall receive. So we'll be studying from Acts chapter 4, the last half of chapter 4. I'll open up with prayer. Holy God, we we love you, Lord. You're high and lifted up. I see you high and lifted up. There's no one above you, no one before you. You are for us. We thank you for sending Jesus down to die on the cross just for us to save us from sin, hell, and death, Lord God. We've been getting a lot of prayer requests, Lord. You even heard what's going on with uh, in Alexi's life and what's going on with Judy's daycare. I'm praying for them. I'm praying for all those in New Birth Ministries, the ones who connect themselves to New Birth Ministries, Lord God. Not that we're trying to be a church, but just that we're trying to be a little prayer group to love on one another and to pray for one another, Lord God. We're not trying to take over anybody's pastorship. We're just trying to love one another. All those that have uh, publicly identified themselves with New Birth Ministries and all those that want to and maybe can't or are in their hearts, they love us too, Lord. I ask that you give them a special blessing, Lord God, and for those that are sick and shut in, those that are incarcerated, those who just don't know who to turn to, where to go, and those that don't have anybody to talk to about the Lord that really, really want to talk about the Lord. I ask that you send those proper and right persons into their lives, Lord God, so that they'll be they'll have someone to talk about you with. Lord God, you said in your holy word two by two and everybody needs somebody. And Lord God, I ask right now that you send somebody into the lives of all those hungry people that want to know about you. Lord God, send us. Lord God, we thank you for using us. You use us and, and you have chosen us, Lord God, which we do not deserve. We do not deserve. Lord God, I know personally myself, I do not deserve anything that you've been giving me, and I truly thank you for it. I thank you for the way that you use us. I thank you for the way that your still, small voice speaks to us in times, Lord God, that we don't know what else to do. We don't know where else to turn. You are always there. Lord, continue to give us patience to wait on you. I ask for patience for nothing else but to wait on you. Because if we wait on you, Lord God, Romans 8, 28, everything's going to work out for the good of those that know you and love you, Lord God. In other words, it's all good. With Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit of God, and God, Abba Father himself, it's all good. So, Lord, I ask that you send your Holy Spirit into this Bible study, and, and Lord, just Hit us with the word. Hit us with your spirit. Those that have been asking to speak in the spirit, and Lord, I ask that you give them the tongues that they need to speak in the spirit because it hinders demons, Lord God. It, It bounces them back off of them, Lord God, because they don't know what they're talking about because they're talking directly from their spirit to you. For those that don't know how to do it, Lord, I ask that you touch their tongue with heated coal and cause them to be able to be cleansed and start speaking to you in the Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah, amen. Amen. Amen, praise God. Um, I'm going to start out, in, in, in Acts chapter 4, it starts out with the arrest of Peter and John. And then we're going to start reading about how um, their boldness kind of got them into trouble. <laughs> you know, they didn't. Mind. And this is how God wants us to be. He wants us to speak the the word of God. He wants us to speak His word. God does not want us to be timid. Uh, my daughter and I was just talking about this earlier today. In fact, and it just rolled around. In fact, um, and it just rolled. Around. I said fact, F A C K. Um, in fact, it just <laughs> rolled around again tonight. That uh, you know, God wants us to be bold. He doesn't want you to be timid. Um, when it when that when that lion. 
the good, when, when, when Satan goes around as a roaring lion and he confronts you, he's going to confront you with some stuff, as we have all as Christians have seen, unless you're a baby Christian and haven't gone through too much, and the ones on here so far I know, and, and the ones that I know that listen, they're, from, they're kind of teenagers to adults. In, in their in their Christendom, uh, should I say it that way? And when Satan comes around as a roaring lion, he, he doesn't want you, God does not want you to cower. You do not cower. Jesus told him, "For it is written, it is written, it is written." Jesus didn't back up off of him, and and Jesus left us that power. In fact, he said he wants us to do greater exploits. He wants us to do greater things than he did. So if Jesus didn't back off of him, we shouldn't either. So here we have Peter and John, the disciples, being arrested. When they go before the council, and Peter's inspired by the Holy Spirit, and then it, 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 God tells us that whenever you're brought before um, the councils and, 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 and judges, he says, don't worry about what you're going to say. He said, don't worry about mm-hmm. what you're going to say. I'm going to, yes, in fact, my daughter told me, was just saying that to me <laughs> about a week ago. Remember that, Lex? Uh-huh. And we were talking about something, and she was reminded me of that. And, and, and uh, she, don't, we don't worry about what we're going to say. God says, open up your mouth wide, and I'll fill it. He tells us what to say. So here's Peter. Uh, If you look at verse 8, it says, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, You rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, then he goes on and on. So Peter is bold. He's saying what he has to say in front of these people. And this is what God wants us to do. He wants us to be bold. Um. He talks about, and then in verse 10, if you look in verse 10, Acts 4.10, he, uh, Peter starts to talk about Jesus boldly in front of the council. Now, we're talking to people who who just um, crucified. I'm sorry. I thought I heard a noise. We're talking about people that, you know, Jesus was just crucified, and people didn't believe in him, and they mocked him and scorned him. And here's Peter standing in front of all these high people in verse 10, saying, Be it known uh, unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified. Uh-oh, he's telling them about their self. Uh, now, wait a minute. What, what is wrong whenever people get mad when you tell them about their self, when, they, when the, the Antichrist, the spirit of the Antichrist? Anytime you're correcting somebody, who doesn't believe in Jesus or just they have low faith and they just don't want to try, uh, or, or people of, of different nations, different nationalities that don't believe that Jesus Christ is, is the Son of God, uh, when you come up to them, now you're going to run into people like that. And they're going to, they're going to some of them are kind of harsh. You're going to have to not be timid and tell them about Jesus Christ. Here's Peter standing in front of the, all the council, all these high high people tell him about who you uh, crucified. In other words, he's telling them, you killed him. Who God, and then he goes on to say, but God raised him from the dead. And so right there, he's telling them, you might be high and mighty, and you might be in the council and everything. He's saying it with love. I'm sure he's not getting, you know, too smart with him. But, you know, he's telling you, you killed him, but he came back. You know, in other words, he said, what part things not understand, you know? He said, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. In other words, he's saying, that's why I'm here. That's the only reason why I'm here. You know, because Jesus gives victory. Yins killed him, and God brought him back. And so we're going on, and they're talking to him, and down, you see the fearlessness of the apostles in verse 13. It says, now... When they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. In other words, the the, the high council, these high and mighty sadity, uh Pharisees and Sadducees, and Essenes, some of them, I, I suppose, these people, they speak with the greatest of, of, of words. They, they have high language. But they see that Peter and John were bold and they were ignorant. It says they were unlearned and ignorant men. And they marveled about it. They were they could not believe that these these men, who obviously weren't as intelligent worldly as they were, they couldn't understand how they could be so bold and talk to them that way. Have you ever run into some church folks 
that actually look down their nose at you and they mm-hmm. let you know. Uh huh. They let mm-hmm. you know who do you think you are? You can't talk to me like that. Well, this is what's happening here. And then it says, and they they took knowledge of them, and they had been that that they had been with Jesus. So, see, Jesus hung with people. He hung with people that weren't so smart. He hung with whores. He hung with fishermen. You can only imagine the jokes. I always say you can only imagine the jokes and everything that the fishermen used to tell. And, you know, folks like that in sports, they have mouths on them. Jesus hung with lowly people. And if, if you notice, they weren't, they said they called them unlearned and ignorant. Of all people... To, call, to think that Peter and John, John that laid his head on Jesus' chest, John that loved Jesus, and then Peter, the rock. You have the, the, the heart and the rock, and they're calling them unlearned and ignorant. How much more would they call us that today? Um, people say, oh, you think you're a minister? Oh, you, you're you a preacher? You're this, you're that? Oh, you're a Christian? Oh, man, I never, if, if all Christians are like you, I don't want to be one. You know, they look down their nose at us, uh, which also goes to show you don't have to have a certificate and you don't have to have a doctorate or a master's to love the Lord, to Tell God's word to somebody else. He tells us in Matthew twenty eight nineteen and 20, go and tell. You know, you don't have to uh, have a piece of paper to do so. Mm. Amen. So the boldness of these unlearned and ignorant men, that stands out to me. Uh, anybody want to say anything about that so far? Any experiences you might have had or anything? Nobody? Obviously, God uses people that the world doesn't, that the world looks down on, kind of. Like, weren't they fishermen? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. But they they probably had, like, one rib one that they had on for ever. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) They probably looked rough. Rough around the edge, like people. Yeah. And that's an example of no matter how somebody looks at you, no matter how the crowd is perceiving you, just let them let God and just do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. I like that. Just do it. Get her done. Mm-hmm. Um, knowing that, you know, there's a, something I'm sure you have heard of a million times, the spirit of intimidation. How many times? Have we ourselves, and I know the main the main ones that's on these phones tonight, how many times have we ourselves been confronted with spirits of intimidation? You know, those people that say that you're not, I tell you, I've been on the Internet since, I tell you what, I've been on the Internet since 2003. Uh, my ministry went on long before then, long before I even had the brick and mortar, um, before I got to church, but... I've been on the Internet for... T- I've had people from 2003 until 2011 tell me that I'm not supposed to be doing what I'm doing. And you know what? It angers me to know that I allowed them to um, infect my mind. There were times where I sabotaged my own ministry. And I know other ministers that do it, too, in different ways. We don't need examples. Mm-hmm. I, I can, you probably know what I'm talking about. There's different ways. You know, they, they get the low in heart. Now, the Bible says uh, not to get low in heart. The Bible says to be bold and be strong. Uh, don't grow weary. And how many ministers have you known in your life that grew weary and tired and they just got buffeted and buffeted and buffeted by by Satan, by messengers of Satan? I know some ministers that gave up their ministry because of what other people said to them. Mm-hmm. See, so we're supposed to be bold. And um, when God calls you to do a thing, you do that thing. And if it's wrong, he'll stop you. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. Amen. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
if if it's wrong, I'm sure God's a big boy. I hate to say it that way. He's God. You know, there's no joke. But I'm sure he, he, if if you're doing something you have no business doing, he'll stop you. He'll let you know. All right. And um, let me see. And, and and what gets me is in in verse 18, they were so they they were so the council was so perplexed about these unlearned and ignorant men. Then in verse 18, they told him, they said, don't even talk about Jesus anymore. Don't even mention his name. It says in verse 18, it says, and they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. Wow. <laughs> wow. How many times have we ourselves gone through that where somebody or something, not necessarily a human being, but how many times have you had the spirit of doom and gloom come upon you? Uh-huh. A spirit of depression come upon you, and something tries to tell you, what do you think you're doing? You look like a fool. Stop it. How many a times? A lot. You, you had a lot? I deal with that, like, daily. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like, I have to deal with that, like, daily. Mm-hmm. See? And the same here, I got to say. And what yeah. Paul told us, fight that good fight of faith. You, Judy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Daily. Daily. Sometimes hourly. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> who do you think you are? And did you ever ha- did you ever have the thought go through your mind where somebody says, uh, I mean, where, where this thought comes to your mind and tells you and says, um, so-and-so is good. Now, that's a preacher. Why can't you be like so-and-so? Why don't you just quit? Mhm. Mhm. So and so's good. Now he's good. She's good. Don't you wish you could be like them? I got to the point now that I'm like, no, thank you, Lord, that I am who I am. I appreciate who God made me, and I love me. No, I don't want to be like other people. I want to be like me. I want to be the way God made me, and I want to be a cheerleader for the kingdom of God. I want to open up my mouth and just cheer and mm-hmm. praise God. Amen? Amen. Mm-hmm. So we'll start with verse 24 and go down. I'll do 24, 25, and 26. Um, Lex can do 27. No, Lex, didn't you do Well, Judy can do 27, 28, and 29. Mm, there it is. Okay, and Lex can do 30, 31, and 32, and we'll go from there. Okay, prayer of the church for spiritual help. And it says, and when they heard that, they lifted up the voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is then, all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, why, and, and you've seen this earlier in the Bible, he, where David says, why did the heathen rage and the people may imagine vain things? It repeats it there, and in verse 26 it says, The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and his, and against his Christ. Oh, my. My, my. You're always going to have opposers. It's a, it, it, I, what I like about it is, in verse 24, they came together on one accord. On one accord. Mm-hmm. You know, what gets me nowadays, we have um, this church is friends with that church, and that church is friends with this church, and this one will only let so-and-so speak in a pulpit, and that one only wants their choir to go sing at this church. It's like a club. There's so many cliques and clubs. You know, and and, and then they wonder why the world is the way it is. We can't get together on one accord and lift our voices to God unless it's choir day in December somewhere once a year. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense to me. You know, and and, and, and it's like there's too much timidity. You know, this pastor told his flock, don't you talk to, Pastor A says, don't talk to Pastor B. 
Because Pastor B, I don't know what kind of doctrine they got going on over there. And the Pastor B says, don't talk to Pastor C. And then this minister, everybody's just like in there. There's so many denominations and separations in the body of Christ. We got band-aids and crutches all over the place with the body of Christ. We need, the body of Christ needs healed. We need healing. Judgment starts in the house of God first, and I see why. I see why. They said they lifted up their voices with one accord and start praying. They said, Lord, thou art God. And they weren't standing on the courthouse steps. You know, everybody, when Christians get together on the courthouse steps once a year, on prayer day or something, or they get together on choir day or, or, or anniversary day, how's about just getting together for the sake of praising the Lord and praying together? Do I have to go to your church to meet you in a coffee shop somewhere and just have a cup of coffee and just praise the Lord or read the Bible or something? You know, uh, one accord, and the Lord thou God which made, and then they began to, to praise him. He said, you're God, God, you made everything. You created the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything that is. And it goes by, and then they repeat David. And then I like that. They did things on one accord. You get things done when you do things on one accord. You know, if one preacher is praying for Jesus to come back and another preacher is praying for a big brand new church, is that on one accord? No. My mind. And the kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord. Everybody all over the earth was against Jesus Christ. And I'm done. Okay, Judy, anybody got any questions or want to add anything to that? Any thoughts that come to you? Don't be afraid because if it gets that good, I'll edit it. <laughs> well, I, was thinking, I was thinking, you know, how in verse 26, how they say Satan's kingdom is, is the world. So in 26, the kings of the earth stood up in the rulers, I was thinking, should we think of those as principalities? Mm. Uh, yes, you can, because they're evil alliances. If you look on the side, were you using your uh, TCR? Yes. Yeah. Look on the side, evil alliances, opposers. Uh, Christ was rejected. Anybody that opposes the Christ, it has the spirit of the Antichrist in them. So, yeah, they are evil principalities and, and wickedness and rulers in high places. Yeah, they are. That's all I where does e- Yeah, where does evil imaginations come from? Yeah. The soul sin. That's why Jesus died for our souls. The soul sin. And what is the soul made up of? Mind, will, and emotion. Mm-hmm. So either we're thinking that evil stuff up, or something has possessed us to cause us, something has taken over our minds to cause us to think evil. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Which means if people are thinking evil, they have an open door somewhere. They have an open window or open door somewhere, and and, and evil thoughts are bombarding them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Judy, you want to do the next three? Okay. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles, and the people of Israel were gathered together, for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Awesome. Okay. And what do you want to? Oh, he's he's also talking again here that they're you know they're of one accord they're in one one group, and 
he's saying that um, he's asking that the Lord grant them, you know, boldness that they can speak against the evil spirits and the threatenings. That's awesome. Uh huh. Did they run? <laughs> no. No. They didn't run. We're not, just like I said, demons are supposed to run from us. We're not supposed to run from them. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever God God had um, determined to be done before is what they wanted to do. That's right. See, and if you notice, they go through the same. They were go- in fact, what they went through is just about worse than what we go through today. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I want to say they're in front of everybody, in front of the whole council. They, they could just be hung right there where they were standing. Mm-hmm. And it even says what they're threatening. Mm-hmm. They were threatening them. They, their lives were threatened. They didn't get. They didn't get their uh, windows uh, broken out with a rock or their tire flattened. Their lives were threatened. <laughs> you know. And they're asking God, give us that boldness, Lord. Do you think they were nervous? Yeah. Me too. Mm-hmm. Because that flesh, huh? You're going to shake. Nervous. Did you? They huh? were nervous, but they, they, were, they also knew that God didn't give them the spirit of fear. So they were mm-hmm. asking for that boldness. Wow. I just said that earlier today. Remember we were talking about that, Lex? Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Isn't that something? God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power. I like that power. Mm-hmm. Everybody says um, power. They, they know the love and the sound mind part, but they, they just skip over power so quickly. <laughs> mm-hmm. God gave sound. us the spirit. Hmm? That sound mind part works in the fact that when you said somebody has a, a door somewhere, so if if you ask God for that sound mind, then your mind is clear. Sweet. So yeah. obviously power power and a sound mind go hand in hand, so you can't have bad thoughts while you gotta keep your thoughts in check. Exactly. That's and and then that Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. That and what you just said causes us to say things in love. Love's in the middle. Power and love and a sound mind. So we're not doing love it in vengeance, right? Perfection. I like that. Would you say love is the what? The bond of perfection. Mm-hmm. Wow. Jesus. Love is the glue that keeps power and a sound mind together, working together. What what would happen if we had power in a sound mind but no love? Right. We'd be operating in the flesh. Yeah. For God is love, right? Yeah, if you're operating with the power in the sound mind and you leave out love, you're as tinkling brass. What is it? Sounding, loud sounding brass or whatever. You just you're just making a whole bunch of noise. Nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing? What do you think about? Just nobody cares. Huh? I said nobody cares. Life is funny. <laughs> okay, Judy. Did you want to add anything else onto that? No. Okay, Lex. It's 30. I started at 30. Mm-hmm. Yes. By stretching for a sign, hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done. By the name of the Lord, uh, by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled up with, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with fullness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. 
Praise God. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. So God turned it around, and everybody, it was just said the Holy Spirit came down and hit everybody. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Mm-hmm. And 31. Okay. And souls were saved. And they all became one. There's a lot of oneness here. A lot of unity. The, mm-hmm. That is awesome. <laughs> mm-hmm. And signs and wonders. I like that, yeah. That's what I, I like that. Yeah. the infilling of the Spirit after they prayed. In verse 31 it says, and when they had prayed, comma, mm, 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 mm. you pray and the Holy Ghost will show up. God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I like what it says, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. No timidity. When you pray, the Holy Ghost shows up. He's our teacher. And Jeremiah 33, 3 says, ask, ask, and and I'll show you things to come. God says, ask, and I'll show you whatever it is you need to know. Mm -hmm. So the first thing they did, they prayed. And the second thing that happened, the Holy Ghost showed up. No, there was a shaking. No, wait, we can't leave out the shaking. Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait. They prayed first, and when they had prayed, then comma, it says the place was shaken where they were assembled together. What do you think about that? <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's God showing his power. The Holy Spirit showing his power. It's, it, yeah, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, my, my. The place was shaken where they were assembled together. And, and and then it goes, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And that, Yeah, Holy Spirit came with the power. I mean, nothing can stand. Nothing can withstand the Holy Spirit. Nothing. No one. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Wow. Everything. The ground. If the ground shakes and buildings shake, because the Holy Spirit's coming. He's on his way. Nothing can can withstand the Lord, right? This happens when you pray. Aren't aren't all these things written in here for, for us? As examples for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. For us to learn and digest. Mm-hmm. What do you think happens whenever we pray? If we don't feel and see that shaking going on, though, what do you think happens? Do you think that the whole lot of shaking going on is not always necessarily um, physical, it, but we are, we it's shaking in the spiritual? It's just um, always. Hmm. I was just going to say that that it's spiritual. We get the spiritual. It's spiritual. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now. Let me ask you this question, too. Um, I just want to see what you can say. There's no certain answer or anything, but I mean, um, do you believe that because some people can't see it in the physical, that it causes their faith to wane? Yes. Depends on the strength of their faith. Mm -hmm. If they have a very strong faith, they're going to believe whether they see or not. Mm-hmm. But if they have a weak face, like Doubting Thomas, mm-hmm. you know, they need to see. 
that's why we are to pray one for another, right? Yes. I please, I ask him, please don't ever forget me. Pray for me. It, it, and, and if I do anything to offend you, I apologize now because girly girl needs prayer. And I don't want to make somebody so mad that they don't pray for me. <laughs> you we know? All we all Isn't that the pray. truth? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you're right. Yes, ma'am. If I did anything, please forgive me and pray for me. As I was just thinking with the, you know, they're talking about the, the shaking, the, the spirit coming in and the shaking. This shaking may not be happening with us when we're praying that what we're praying, but if we're praying for somebody else, that shaking may be happening inside of them. Ooh, nice. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that, that we're shaking their spirit. Yeah. yeah. And then they call us on the telephone and they say, you're not going to believe what happened. God just stepped in and helped me in this situation. Me and my husband uh-huh. are getting along better now, and they don't even realize you laid up there and prayed for them the night before. Uh-huh. But it's not for us to take. That's why God said no man is going to take his glory. Oh. Yeah, that's beautiful, Judy. That's beautiful. Yeah, we might not see it, but it's working somewhere else. What well, intercession? Mm-hmm. And the Bible says Jesus intercedes for us. He's sitting on the right hand side of the Father, making intercession for us. Isn't that what it says? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the Holy yeah. Spirit intercedes for us when we can't put the words into prayers. The Holy Spirit does our prayers for us. Mm, or, he, or he knows what's on our heart. Let's turn to Romans 8.26. Keep your finger on the place and turn to Romans 8.26. Next book. I like that. There it is. Ooh, my love. Okay, that's... Romans 8, is everybody there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings and cannot be uttered. That's a different one than I was looking for. The one I was looking for was when uh, Jesus is sitting on the right-hand side of God. Um, does anybody happen to know where that's at? Let me see. Intercessions. Oh, that's the spirit. Um, Jesus. Uh, let me see. Let me try something else here. But I like. I think it's in there a couple times. I think it's in there more than just once. Oh my. Christ. Is, yeah, there it is. Colossians three one. Oh, it's in once. Okay, turn to Colossians three one. Maybe I found it in Ephesians one twenty. Maybe. Did you? Um, I think so. It doesn't read it. about interceding. Where he rides oh, really? with me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's the same <laughs> thing on it. There it is, Colossians 3, 1. Judy, everybody got it? Yeah. Well, that's it. There it is. <laughs> if ye then be risen with Christ, speak those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Amen. Set your affection on things above, not on the things of the earth. In other words, be in the now. Heaven is now. (laughs) We were saying earlier, heaven is now. Be in the now. Live in the now. God lives in you. He wants to enjoy your now with you. You know, let him, let God be concerned about the future. He forgave your past. And he's cons- and, and he's going to take care of your future. So what else do you have but to live in the now? Enjoy your now. Hmm. Okay. And whose turn is it? <laughs> Anybody have any other questions or anything? Mm-hmm. 33. Yeah. 33. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection. There's a power again. The apostles re- uh, witness of the resurrection of Lord the witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. They had uh, they had 
outstanding, excellent grace from the Lord. God gave them grace to tell everybody about how Jesus rose from the dead. In other words, he did not stay there. No, his bones are not buried in the ground anywhere. Jesus came of whole body and soul. And they were telling everybody about his resurrection. Because, see, what a lot of people understand is the Essenes and, and, and the, and the, uh, the uh, what do they call it? The, uh, the ones I taught on this, uh, they just escaped my mind. The Sadducees and the Pharisees. Uh, yeah, those are those are three certain Jewish sects that were very S E C T S <laughs> that were very um some of them were very they were very strict. And the uh the Essenes didn't believe in the resurrection. That's one of the, it's one of the things they didn't believe in. Why why I think the, the Pharisees didn't believe they believed they believed in the written Torah and the Sadducees believed no, the Pharisees believed in the spoken the Sadducees believed in the written, and the Essenes didn't believe in the resurrection at all. And imagine these apostles going up against these high and mighty Jewish sects, uh, trying to tell them that, yes, Jesus did arise. It wasn't easy for them. And then it goes, neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as possessors of lands and houses sold them and bought the prices of the things that were sold, uh, they lacked nothing. They wanted for nothing. Divine supplies. After all that, the Holy Spirit came down and blessed them. They had divine supplies. They wanted for nothing. Um, and let me ask you this question before I go on. I'm thinking about Judy's daycare. Is it possible that sometimes things don't come to us as quickly as we would like for them to, not because we're being tried, but because we don't have support. Mhm. You think so, Max? Probably. I'm wondering, yeah. Because here they were all together. They were on one accord. They were all together. You know, and um Judy's asking people, you know, she's asking her friends and she's asking people to pray and I'm sure they pray for her and everything, but when you're online and you really don't know people that great. We don't really know each other that great. We haven't sat down and had a cup of coffee with one another. I mean, what are they really doing? Are they really praying mm-hmm. for you? Uh-huh. Yeah, there, are certain lot ones of you, there are certain ones that you know that they are because of, of their, you can tell their faith, even though you've never really met them. But there's mm-hmm. others that can be questionable. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that that doubt can knock out any you know, the doubt can knock out any promise that, or any any prayer of agreement you make with anybody can be knocked out by doubt. See? God does not want us to doubt. That's it. He wants us to have faith. I also think I'm being taught the, the lesson of patience. Mm-hmm. And I really, I think there is a reason why I don't have kids. I think right now it's be, to be a support for my mom. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's a lot going on right now that mom is on a roller coaster of emotions right now, and I think it's just part of her grieving process that she really never totally went through. And I think right now she just needed that extra support and me not having kids and being able to be with her more. I think mm-hmm. is you know is part of the reason also. And you enjoy and, that now too. You enjoy that every minute. I, I see it as a blessing that, you know, I'm being able to spend this time with mom without having the worry of, you know, i got to get home, I have the kids, you know, I can't go with you because I have kids today. It's I'm able to pick up and go with her when she has appointments and and do stuff with her. It's a very unselfish act. And I can call that her. You're putting, you're putting your mom first. Yeah. I, I can call her umpteen million times a day and not worry that I'm drawing attention away from the kids. You know, I can call and make sure she's okay, that that she's not needing anything. And that's good. Well, know that know that we pray for you. New Birth prays for you, and we mean it from our hearts. I pray for every. I pray for. I pray. Like you said, you can tell the ones who are strong. 
Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, who are spiritually strong. You can tell the ones that are kind of weak. And you can also tell the ones that laugh in your face yeah. and uh, talk real nice to you in your face, but you can just, you feel a little something, something there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you, you just know the ones yeah. that are faithful, you know. Yeah, man. They said N- nobody lies. They want it for nothing. And then 35, it says, I'll just finish it off, and it says, and laid them down at the apostles' feet. They sold everything and laid it down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. So with everybody pitching in, they had 100% blessings, abundance. Mm -hmm. And when somebody needed something, it was there for them. They went to the church to get what they needed. They didn't go to welfare. They didn't go to Catholic Charities, who, praise God, I'm going to say publicly helped me before. Lord bless them. I pray for them. They, I said, is there anything I do for you? They said, no, no, no. They said, just just, just pray for us. And I mm-hmm. thought that was so cool. Catholic Charities, people be surprised what Catholic Charities does for people. You know, they went to the church. Um, and how many churches do we have nowadays that has people sitting out in the pews with no electric, gas, and water on. You hear me say it all the time. I talk about it all the time because I've been there and done that and wore the T-shirt. Mm-hmm. What is Michael? wrong with that picture? Hmm? Totally wrong. Hmm? But that's totally wrong. Yeah, it's wrong. What's wrong, what's wrong with that? There's something wrong with that. We're supposed to go to the church. Can you imagine? Here's what I'm. Here's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say it right now. I believe there is going to come a time where the church is going to open up her eyes, and people are going to start seeing that they weren't good stewards over God's stuff. I'm not just talking mm-hmm. about money because God don't need our money. But there's going to come a time where the world's going to come to us for what they need. And we're going to stop going. God is going to make it so that we will stop going to the world for whatever we need. I truly believe that. Um, yeah, every man according to, as they need. Everything they needed, whatever they need, they went to the church for it. And they didn't have to go to the world for it. Um, when you go to the world for it, you have to do as the world says. You know, there's a lot of mm-hmm. when I used to be the I used to be the president of a um, uh, of the first female president of the Highland Erie Committee in Washington, PA, and we built houses and all kind of stuff. We did. We used to give out like notebooks to kids on you know before mm-hmm. school started, and we had African American festivals. We did all kind of stuff. And one thing I was told by a man who headed it up before me, he, in fact, he um, made the Highland Erie Committee, um, Mr. Fleet, Fred Fleet. And one thing he told me, he says, do not go. He said, make sure you get donations from people. He said, do not go to the government for help. And he wasn't saying it to be mean, but he said what happens is if you go to the government for, for help, they'll give you what you need. They'll give you money but they're going to tell you how to spend it, you know. And so as long as the Highland area was there, we, we helped out the people and stuff in, in the Washington area, and as long as they were open, um, we, we uh, wanted for nothing. The people, the people in the town were just lovable. They were just the kind of people. We had businesses giving to us. You know, we would uh, do drives once a year or something, and, and we got all the money that we needed from people who believed in us. They believed in what the Highland Erie Committee was doing. We didn't get the money from the government. And this is what's happening to a lot of people. They're getting hung up because they're going to the government and getting money, and the mm-hmm. government's telling them how to spend it. So something to watch out for, you know. Um, we think of, and Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed, Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, um, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. This man sold his land to keep the church going. Isn't that beautiful? Um, wow. So, anybody have any questions or anything you want to add or say? The Lord laying anything on your heart? Okay. 
Okay. I take it as a no? No. <laughs> okay. So what we learn here is how to be bold, ask for what you want, and know that you're going to get it. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Amen. And, and um, don't be afraid to ask another Christ- a Christian to pray with you, pray for you, be on one accord. Uh, we can't afford to judge one another. The judgment's got to go. The judgment has mm-hmm. to go. If if all the Christians in the world got together like the Muslims and all them do, can you imagine what we would get done? Yeah. Did you ever notice that Muslims they don't they don't have like a we're light Muslims and we're medium Muslims and the we're heavy Muslims and we're Muslims from the left <laughs> and we're Muslims from across the track on the other side of the street. You know, they just they're just Muslims, man. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and they all do the same thing. You know, I just wish that they believed that Jesus Christ was the son, you know? But they don't. They just said he's a teacher. Um, can you imagine if Christians would drop the denominations and just be of Christ? You can imagine the things we'd get done. Oh my gosh, tell Judy about that story on the elevator. About the what? So we're going to church, right? We're going, and um, there's two ladies that get on the elevator. One lady's like, oh, I'm headed down the street to the Presbyterian church. And then the other lady's like, oh, I'm headed down the street to the Baptist church. And, like, they were really excited about their little denomination. <laughs> then I was like, well, we're going downstairs to the non-denomination. Non-denomination. Well, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> that was so cool. Yeah. And like, like, so, like, why we're couldn't we just all be going to church? <laughs> like, why couldn't we just like, oh, we're going to go worship the Lord? We're like, nah, we're going Team Presbyterian or something. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It was, Jim, you should have heard it. It was just, it was so crazy just standing on an elevator listening to all these people talking about their denominations for Sunday. Uh, you know, so just like, just like um, I heard um, somebody say one time, they said, if it's made by man, if it's an ism or an ist, don't, you know, it's, it's, you know if it's made by man, um, most likely there's some fallacies there. Mm-hmm. If it's made by God. It's right. It's right. So they were going to their ifs and their isms. I call it ifs and isms. And we were just going downstairs to have church, man. I was like, well, mm, we don't have, what are you? <laughs> not, I don't know. Non-denominational. Can we be non-denominational? <laughs> Can I put a question mark after that or period, you know? <laughs> yeah, man. All right. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for the Bible study that we had tonight. It's awesome. And, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for overlooking (laughs) some things that we do and and just loving us anyhow, God. But we ask your Holy Spirit to teach us those things that you want us to know that will make us stronger and powerful um, and and, and bold and speak with bold, not cockiness, but to speak with boldness, Lord God. And um, we want the enemy to run from us. We don't want to run from the enemy. And we're just going to sit back. Lord God, Now that I'm praying to you right now, I really want to thank you for something that you did for my family. Uh, The enemy came up against um, a member of my family, in fact, two members of my little family, and they were just going to try to wipe us out and do us some injustice. And you fought that battle for us to the point where they were publicly brought out. Um, And, Lord God, we're praying for their soul. We're praying that that never happens to them again and that they turn their hearts to you, Lord God. But we do thank you for fighting our battles. Lord, we just want to see all these people give their heart to you and to be open with you and not to be uh, so vindictive towards people. And, 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 And the jealousy enters in because they think that we're trying to be better. We're not trying to be better. We're just trying to worship God with as many people as we can. Uh, so, so we thank you, Lord God, for what you've done for us. And I ask also that you continue to help um, Judy and her mother and, and, and Aaron and his wife and, 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 and Sandy and all the other ones that even uh, Pastor Rod didn't come on tonight. Lord, the main ones, uh, I, I give them to you because you're just that good, Lord. Thank you, and we love you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 And amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory, to God be the glory for the things he has done. God bless you, and I'll see you back. Oh, no, you know what? No, no, no. 
There's not going to be any because of Thanksgiving. In fact, I'm not going to start doing Bible study again probably until December. But I'll let you know. You'll see it on Facebook or something, okay? All right. God bless you. Tell your friends. Good night. (laughs) Good night.